<laughs> so are they saying here then that Town and Country 2 does meet health and safety? Uh, because the prior, the prior page describes, the preceding page talks about the different application and the differences in it. On page six, I'm sorry, they're talking about the different things included in the 2000 in Town and Country 2's application. Are they making any ruling at all on the health and safety of uh, Town and Country 2 in this document? In the sense that they are affirming the determination by the Pollution Control Board, yes. But as to a separate and independent review of the evidence, probably not. I can't speak for sure, but what they are saying is real simple here. You wanted us to find out to determine whether or not the actions of the board were against the manifest weight of the evidence. We we found out and know they did it right. So, does it appear, so it appears that what they're doing is a ruling on document specific and documents provided by town and country they're not ruling on the science that's out there that would be completely a misapplication of the case Ms. Bernard okay well that's what I'm trying to determine here so what is the next step do we can we continue can we pursue this on health and safety grounds that's what I just spent the first 10 minutes talking about are the next steps so we haven't uh, have we approached on the health and safety ground yet? Well, we can't bring evidence Nobody can bring evidence at this point. It's at the appellate court level. The appellate court is making a determination right now as to whether they should have another hearing on this opinion that they granted. Again, their options at this point are grant a rehearing, deny a rehearing, or deny the rehearing and send it back to the Pollution Control Board. Those are their choices right now. At the same time, pending before the Illinois Supreme Court is a petition for leave to appeal that has not yet been filed, but the, the time for filing has been extended and that's been granted. Keep in mind, I guess I should have brought this up, timing and rules are a whole lot different at this level than they are at the circuit court. It isn't like you're in a lawsuit in front of Judge Wenzelman and you just didn't have time to get the deposition done because you went on vacation with your family. And you go and say, ah, oh, Judge, I know I only have 30 days, but give me another 30 days. Sure, Jamie, take whatever you want. I'll give you 180. They don't do that at the appellate court level. They give you one, maybe two extensions. On this issue, whether or not to rehear this case, extensions have been granted with regard to filing of the briefs. In my personal opinion, there's going to be a weighing at some point on whether we say, okay, we're out of this fight, we gotta go to the Supreme Court, or we're gonna stay in this fight, and if we lose our shot to go to the Supreme Court, because the appellate court said, ha, we've decided we're not granting rehearing and your 30 days is up. I, I think that may be where this thing is headed, but I don't know. I have just one other question then. Where does the science of all this work into all these cases that are <coughs> pending? the related cases that are pending with, with this case. I don't understand your question. Um, which cases are they looking at? Because I know that like waste management is filed. They're not. Right now they're not looking at any cases, Ms. Bernard. That's the point. The only case they cited in this opinion was down in country one. Right, but are there still other cases? Not, I'm not talking about the appellate, but are there still other cases pending that are dealing with the health and safety and welfare? To other, uh, to other parties filing? I have no idea what you're asking. I'm sorry. Well, she's asking if any other evidence is brought in. No. Am I correct, Mr. Bernard? I'm sorry. There's no other evidence to be presented. Unless, unless somehow this ends up back at the Pollution Control Board and the Pollution Control Board agrees to accept new evidence, which they are not bound to do, that's the only way I see new evidence ever being presented on this matter. Stolen. Thank you. Um, this might not apply for legality's sake of it. I was talking with some constituents in my <clears throat> district, and the suggestion was made that the request that the Army Corps of Engineers look at the elevation of the site because it is in the floodplain and that they can shut the whole thing down and negate the legality of it. I don't know if that's true or not or would be worth looking into. I can do some 
let it go. I don't have to respond. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more than happy to hear a motion to adjourn. Um, <laughs> it's certainly a possibility, but now you're dealing with, with federal regulations, and we would have to sit down with whatever the appropriate committee is. I don't know if it's planning, zoning, agriculture, whichever committee would deal with this, and make some determinations. I'm more concerned about the pending litigation right now. I believe at the time that issue was addressed uh, with mitigation by the, the proponents and that supposedly solved that problem. Not solved it, but solved it to the satisfaction of, of uh, the pollution control. To the satisfaction of EPA and the pollution control board, yes, that's correct. Mr. James. Thank you. If we, I mean, this is a puddle of quicksand we're playing with here. What I want to know is, if we step in it, can we step out of it, or do we have to keep going trying to swim across it? In other words, if we if we go, anytime, anytime you want to you want to cut your losses and run, you can always cut and run. No, no, I don't want to. I, I don't mean I it in a negative sense. I mean, any time that you believe it's no longer feasible to continue in the litigation. Get out of the litigation. Well, this is my point. I mean, we're, we're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars here. And I'm, I'm looking at public opinion, and it's like they want to see this thing shut down, which I have no argument with. But they also don't want to pay $40 million to get the job done. We've got to make a decision somewhere where we're going to end up and where we're going to start. Now, I've got nothing to say don't or out there, but if this thing's going to get drug out and we're running out of money which we already are and we're running out of time can we walk that's the point i want to make because we're, we're somewhere this thing's got to end guys it's got to die a natural death either you know one of us is going to die on this thing either the courts or us and i got a feeling it's going to be us i i would suggest at this point that we have never had an exit strategy we've always measured success by ultimate success what you're talking about is, is for this board to sit down and talk about do we, at what point, is enough enough? And that, I want to be clear, that's the decision of this board. That's what a legislative body does in a situation like this. You all will decide when enough is enough. What our exit strategy should be. When, when do we get out? Do we keep this on to the end regardless of cost? regardless of effect, regardless of the increase in taxes or whatever other effect there may be. That's for you guys to decide. Thank you. Uh, I'll go with Mrs. Schmidt first. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Boyd, if in some way we can separate ourselves away from waste management. No. There's no way they will ever. I mean, it. it they don't stay here. I mean, no, I mean, in in these appeals, as as just the county and the people of the of Kankakee County, and not have the it our um what we want to do associated with a commercial entity. I think we have done everything we are supposed to do. We filed our own briefs. We hired our own lawyers. We took our own positions. We've made our own arguments. So the appellate court gets to write the opinion. We don't get to tell the appellate court we don't like the way you wrote it. it you just, I'm sorry. That's that's the real world is the appellate court writes the opinion. And sometimes they just decide, you know what, what we really got here is we got town and country over here and everybody else over there, so we're just going to say, this is town and country, this is everybody else. We're not going to separate out who everybody else is, we're just going to list them. That's my understanding, this isn't everybody else. I mean, there are other parties that are trying to appeal and sue and stop. Correct? Not in this case. These are the parties to this case. Well, are we together or are we not? No, we are a separate entity. For their discussion, Mrs. Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So. If the county walks away, 
What happens? Does the land begin open? I have no does idea. Happen? Does it give a green light to town and country to, to begin? Not necessarily. It depends on. When I say walk away, I mean to stop participating. It doesn't necessarily mean the case will stop of its own accord. I don't know what waste management's positions will be, what, what, what they will attempt to do. I don't know if anyone else will pick up the ball and file briefs uh, in, as friends of the court, amicus curiae. I don't know. And the determinations will be made when that happens. What are the odds that it would... In I'm never going to give you odds on what's going to happen. Sorry. Well, you just did on this, the Supreme uh, Court no. thing. You said odds are that they wouldn't rehear the case. I'm sorry? Earlier, earlier you said that the odds are that the appellate court would rehear the case. What is it? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Vickery was trying to. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, backing up just a little bit, um, under uh, Town and Country 1, that brought about a new application, I understand, according to this brief, um, which brought about more information. Is that correct? It brought about the 2003 application, which then had to bring in much more evidence into the case. Is that the way uh, the scenario It was a new case. Pardon? It didn't bring any new evidence into the other case. It no. was a separate case. It, it brought about Town & Country 2 then because of 2003, the new application. Town & Country 2 is the, the second application by Town & Country before the, the city of Kankakee for siting. That's, that's the second case. Right. Could, could, could we at, at our... Uh, January meeting then have uh, Mr. Helson on the phone too? Or here. Or here. Yeah, I mean, Definitely. give us the total picture. I, I, Jamie's done a good job here giving us his his uh, take on this thing, but we just need all the information we can to make a decision. Thank you. Mr. Scholl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, after listening to this, I think we're at the point that we need uh, to set up the subcommittee to analyze where we go from here. You can call it an exit, exit strategy, whatever you want to call it, but we need a group to examine all the factors and come back to the next board meeting and say, you know, you, you know that this, it, it just appears to me right now that this is it. And no more evidence can be produced or, or submitted. We can come up with evidence. Evidence. I, I'm totally opposed to landfill. Period. And we can come up with all this evidence, but it is not admissible. These are legal technicalities that have to be dealt with, and we need to figure out how we're going to get out of this from this point on. And, and I think it would be realistic to, to have a, a subcommittee analyze this, and then the discussion next month, and make a decision as to where we're going. My thought is creating another subcommittee is just going to delay. Yes. Discussion. The committee as a whole here just right. needs to discuss mm -hmm. something. <coughs> right. Planning and zoning take care of it. Um, the the very to the the back to the <laughs> <laughs> planning and zoning. So that's the question. Then. We'll go back to planning and zoning. I think at this point it matters before the full board, and I okay. think we as a board, uh, again as a committee as a whole, we need to arrive at a conclusion. Mr. James. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think what we need is basically more facts for us to work with here, but I understand that when we initiated this, didn't we have some funding that was given to us out of waste management or something to appeal this case? If you go back and trace the finances, I was working on that yesterday a little bit with the help of our finance department. Uh, there was an initial grant waste management to assist in the first waste management and the second waste management hearings, along with reimbursement for uh, continuing litigation from waste management. So Mr. Boyd cited earlier the, a number of like two, two million to two and a half million dollars in legal. The county, the net result was the county did not stand that much expense because waste management did fund a lot of that. I haven't been able to pin down the exact numbers. It appears to me there's been a million to a million and a half coming back from waste management. Nevertheless, the county has substantial adjustment. So based, based on... I'm sorry, did I turn you off? 
what's new here. <laughs> so basically what we're talking about here is a business decision. We initiated a program and we were subsidized. And then the subsidy was with the intent that if we go this far, we stop spending, you start spending yours. And we're at the point now where the appellate court and everybody else has got rulings here on the table that really don't look like anything <coughs> spectacular for me to start investing more of our money in. And I think we got to take a long, hard look at this. I will say, come Wednesday, we'll get Mr. Helston here. We might give this thing one more shot, but if we're going to be doing it on our tab at the tune of millions of dollars, and the run that's going to really be the investor that initiated the program for us to that encouraged us by throwing this money out here is no longer coming forward with the money. And it, you know, it's like buying a house when Dad says he's not going to write the check no more. It's time to go look for another house. Mr. Lear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. From what I've heard, it appears that we as a body are going to need to act as a legislation uh, as a legislature to make a political decision. We really do have to go back to our constituents and decide how much money do they want to spend to stop what I I'm still inclined to believe may well threaten the, the health and safety of the, the water supply in the county. I, I, I'm basically persuaded that there is a, a, a risk here. At the same time, I, I don't know what our constituents feel in terms of how much they want to spend to avoid that risk. Every time I get in an automobile, there's a risk that I'm going to be hit by some crazy driver out there. But I don't stop driving. Um, it's a hard decision to balance off what the taxpayers want to spend, particularly if it gets into the millions of dollars, and uh, the risks of the future. It is hard to say that it will only be a couple hundred more thousand, uh, not, maybe another 10,000. Um, excuse me, Mr. Boyd, if I suggest the lawyer's fees are such at that level that uh, these specialists that we're hiring are, that uh, I don't think it's going to be a small amount. But maybe our constituents will say, we want to spend that money because our health is that important. We're really going to have to spend the next month talking to people and finding out, are they willing to bear some significant tax increases? Uh, that's what I see. One more time. Okay, on the front sheet of this paper, I noticed there's three X's the right hand side. Does that mean this was a four to three decision? No, those are the three, at the appellate court level, three judges are assigned to each case. All judges may hear it. Three judges give the decision. Those are the three judges who decided this case. Justices McDade, Holdridge, and Schmidt. Mr. Vickery? I, I can only echo Mr. Lear's comments. Uh, I think it's a, a matter we need to take to our constituents. Uh, I think there's been a number of people who have supported our efforts to push forward and I think um, one way is we must look ahead perhaps two decades and see how our decision on this matter will affect Kankakee County. Uh, it's an important decision. Thank you. I would ask is there any other information we as a board would like to have as we mull this over? My last time. Yeah, you're past, but I asked a question. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to just to put this in perspective, and as somebody who is in the public all the time because I have a, a, an open restaurant in the city of Kankakee, and someone who's been knocking on doors for the last six months, and um, I can tell you that the people in the city of Kankakee do not want this landfill, and they do not want. Uh, and I don't think they care how much money it's going to cost to stop it. It concerns them deeply. Now, I'm not saying that we should send, spend $40 million, which I'm sure it's not going to cost $40 million, Stan, 
and I don't think they're going to have a significant tax increase to fight this landfill. Um, I think that we should, for them, make sure that we try to take it a few more steps at least mm -hmm. to see what we can do to try to stop this landfill. I think it's very important to the future and to uh, who knows what it's going to cost us if we don't fight it. And that's really what we have to take into consideration here today and next month. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, we're exceeding our limit now. Uh, Mr. Kalecki has not spoken. Um, I just had one question, sir. And that oh, was, I just had one question, and that would be, would the upcoming change in the administration of the city of Kankakee affect this in any way? Um, I know they're about to be electing a new mayor who may have different opinions on the landfill than the current administration. Could they change this since they were initially the the first step in this in the permit and deciding sure they can. Right. Sure. Sure they can make it difficult but they granted signing. They can get into a legal battle with town and country. If, if, if eventually the appellate process is in favor of town and country and the rulings all end up in favor of town and country then I'm sure there's no limit to the type of issues they could raise with town and country but to flat out reverse the siting I, I've never looked into it I'm not representing the city but no I certainly don't think that's likely Mr. Vickery one more thank you Mr. Chairman I I, uh, I think it is more than a business decision I think this decision goes farther than just a plain business decision this affects the future of Kinky County. So uh, to my esteemed colleague, I, 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 I humbly disagree uh, that it is a business decision. I, I think this is one of those that goes much farther than that. Thank you. I think we've exhausted our discussion. Let's, uh, as, as, as I say, we've had good discussion here. We've mulled this over. Mr. Hess, you want a chance? I just, thank you, Chairman. I just want to give an opinion. I think with the magnitude of this, I don't think we should cover this at a county board meeting. I think this should be a special meeting so anybody can attend. The length is going to be pretty long, especially if you have outside counsel here. That'd be my suggestion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a, a question. If the ultimate goal is to stop the landfill, and it would appear to me that, that all legal channels have been tried, and, and subsequently, I, I personally, I believe we have lost the legal appeal. Are there other avenues that can be taken to stop the landfill? By the land. I guess my initial response is everybody has a price. <laughs> and I'm sure that Mr. Bellini and Mr. Barbara and the Town and Country Corporation have a price. I have no idea what it would be and certainly it's not a discussion we've ever had. But the special meeting I think we've been able to have a thorough discussion here yes it's taken some time but it seems to me we can handle it in a regular meeting uh, however any number of board members could call a special meeting if they desire by petitioning the county clerk but my thought is I think we can handle it in our, in our meeting. Mr. Boyd I'd ask if there's any other information you think would, benef would be beneficial to the board in terms of background information maybe a copy of the case I'll sit down with my uh, civil staff. We'll go through and perhaps uh, do a historic memorandum or something of that nature to the benefit of the board members. Very good. Let's move on. Related issue, but uh, separate delegation agreement update. As many of you have heard, after our action as a board back in October to enter into 
the delegation agreement. Uh, and this was after verbal uh, discussion with Illinois EPA representatives between basically Mr. Altoff took the lead on that as uh, PZA chairman and arrived at uh, what was thought to be an agreement on how we would handle such a such an agreement. Uh, correspondence was received by the county suggesting that uh, in fact Illinois EPA has had second thoughts about assigning those duties to health department. They prefer not uh, assigning those duties to planning. They go so far as to suggest that a separate department might be appropriate. Subsequent to that correspondence, we get in the mail a timeline for getting the grant application drafted and submitted, which comes up uh, early March. So here we are without a plan and not sure whose responsibility is to file a grant application. Mr. Altoff, uh, have you had a chance to follow up with Mr. Finley at the Illinois EPA? I've spoken with Mr. Finley in Chicago and uh, he was uh, sending an email down to the to Springfield to the EPA office and I'm attempting to set up a meeting on Thursday afternoon with them uh, regarding this issue and uh, I haven't got that nailed down yet but I hope to this afternoon. So that's the status. We just wanted to inform the board where we were on that and uh, we are working on uh, resolving this discussion. Miss uh, Mrs. Bernard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I would like to see Mr. Finley come to a meeting so the discussion can take place publicly as well in case other board members have some questions or would like to have some input. Can we arrange question, that? The question might be, is Mr. Finley making a decision? No. So uh, I think at this point it's appropriate to have a the conversation, but probably not in the context of a full board meeting or even well, let's, let's let's I'm in agreement we need to get somebody here to talk. Figure right, out who figure out who to talk to is maybe maybe the issue. Right, because I don't want to see the delegation agreement go away again like it is before. I don't want to see us lose it. It's the only environmental cop that we had on the beat. <coughs> Mr. Vickery. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Of the three issues that come to mind, uh, in light of importance, I, I would say that when we went through the waste management hearings a number of years ago, that was a, a pretty important thing. This case with town and country comes to mind as number two, and the delegation agreement comes to number three. Because on the chance that we would have a landfill, who monitors that landfill? And other activities and other dump sites in Kankakee County. So I think the delegation agreement, I hope that each member of here will take this very seriously because I believe for the future of Kankakee County, this is a very serious issue. I know it may be a hard path here for a while, but I believe this is so important to monitor the actions of some people in Kankakee County. And I want to thank you, Mr. Chancellor. Thank you. Mrs. Bernard again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just a couple of things to keep in mind. <coughs> if we do establish a separate department for the delegation agreement, which I believe we need to, number one, it's not going to be that expensive to set up a department. You can set it up in a small office. You can use a laptop, Blackberry, cell phone. Number two, when Donna Sheehan was running, uh, was in charge of the delegation agreement, she had more than $600,000 in fines assessed against polluters. So I don't think cost should be a factor or it's something we don't need to worry about because this department can be self-supporting. Um, number three, with a local officer, you will have more inspections. For that 17 months or so in which we did not have a delegation agreement, our inspections dropped by more than 70% of the local sites. And we need to have an environmental cop who's on the beat and who's on the beat regularly. So again, I concur with Mr. Vickery. I urge it the board to consider keeping the delegation agreement and in a separate independent department that will report to a committee so there is no political pressure. Mr. Tholen. If we go forward with setting up a separate 
office entity, whatever, who has the choice in delegating that employee from that officer? I'm assuming if it's a separate and independent department, it would be the county board chair would make the appointment. It would be to fill the position. To fill the line. Yeah. Mr. Tripp. I disagree. No. I disagree with uh, Ms. Bernard. I think it should go under the health department. I know they suggest that it not. That's a suggestion. It's not a hard line. So I think that's the place for it, and uh, I don't see any reason to create a new department. Okay. We've given you an update on that matter, so I think we'll move on at this point. That's all for old business. I have no new business other than a few items for information. Uh, <laughs> We have a vacancy on the health board as far as a county board member. Uh, Mrs. Wilson uh, retiring from the board, that spot is open, so I'm looking for perhaps a volunteer. If not, I may be approaching someone to uh, fill that position on the health board. The Economic Alliance uh, is in need of uh, some reappointments. I'm not looking to change those on the board. Uh, we got to looking at the uh, bylaws, however, of the Economic Alliance and the language now indicates that the, those board members are appointed on staggered terms and that was never done, by the way. I think we, uh, in the process of a startup situation, seven members were appointed, but we never indicated the terms of office. So next month we'll have some resolutions in place and, and get, get that feature in place. Uh, you all have calendars in your mailbox for the coming year. This is, uh, all, as always, it's tentative, but uh, I think we've uh, arranged a calendar that we'll be looking at. We've uh, modified a couple of meetings to, in an effort to get the uh, executive committee uh, the, being the last meeting of the month rather than finance. So look that over. A reminder, there's no PZA meeting tomorrow. That committee has been canceled, and in the future, we'll be reducing PZA to one meeting a month routinely. Uh, the matters before PZA have just been diminished to the point that uh, it makes more sense just to schedule one. If there's something extra comes up, we can always schedule an extra. Uh, pictures afterwards here, so let's meet downstairs at 11 o'clock, and uh, we'll get that done. And Stephanie Jackson has our... Has is done today with our administration as you many of you have heard is uh, for some reason wants to go work for Bob Gessner at the coroner's office and uh, so we thank Stephanie for her four and a half years uh, helping the administration and uh, putting up with uh, uh, board members and who think they're funny sometimes <laughs> as a board member pleasant for all of you. You all have gotten your new, newly designed uh, per diem worksheet in front of you. They're asking for your mileage now on every submission. That way, simplify the process and you'll be reimbursed monthly on for the mileage. So it'll be a simple matter to plug that in along with your per diem. Mrs. Campbell. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm Stephanie Jackson. I'm the Executive Director of the do board members, do we have a line item in the budget like for supplies or whatever for board members? You know, for Not different things that we need. Specifically for board members, the administration has office oh. supplies and that type of Do you of think they could squeeze out a couple bucks for some crazy work on my table? <laughs> <laughs> Just to snag my jacket three times today, boys. Duly noted. Okay, thank you. Pass that on, buddy. Are there any other matters before the board? <laughs> Mr. Lundjess wants to get into the mills. Yes, just. Just, uh, just to let you know, uh, to help the budget crunch here at the county, I'm foregoing my mileage. <laughs> <laughs> least Thank I can do. Do we have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Pilecki, Mr. Victory was a second. All in favor?